of my kindred and would speak unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give this land he shall send his angel before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence and if the woman will not be willing to follow thee then thou shalt be clear from this my oath only bring not my son thither again the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear unto him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hands. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that the women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by a well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass, that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she so she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking. Say that again. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, behold, Rebekah came out who was born of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand, and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. She hasted, she hasted, and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. All right, and skip over to Uh, verse 65 verse 64 says and Rebecca lifted up her eyes and when she saw Isaac she lighted off the cam camel for she had said unto the servant what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us the servant had said it is my master therefore she took a veil and covered herself and the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done and Isaac brought her into her mother, his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Amen. All right. One use for a subject today. Happily ever after. As a child, I always enjoyed reading fairy tales. Y'all read any fairy tales? I often enjoy fairy tales because fairy tales always had a happy ending. You know, some fairy tales that I kind of like uh, fairy tales like like Cinderella. Y'all remember Cinderella, don't you? Uh, let me give you my version of Cinderella. Cinderella was a girl who went from rags to riches. Uh, she was a girl that uh, didn't nobody really like. They was hating on her all the time, made her do menial chores and tasks. Uh, and, and they really was trying to hide the fact that she was more beautiful than everybody else. Uh, but because you couldn't see it on the outside, uh, people tried to hinder her what she felt on the inside. And one day, fair godmother said, well, if you want to go to the ball, I'll make a way. So poof, 
She made her look gorgeous, gave her a gown and everything, and she gave her some glass slippers. Cinderella goes to the ball. The Prince Caesar can't wait to dance with her. Uh, he, he asked, can I take you out tonight? And so Cinderella dancing with him and the clock struck 12. Cinderella leaves and leaves her shoe. Y'all know how you do. Uh, she leaves her shoe, leaves her shoe. And, and, and so the Prince uh, wanted to know who Cinderella was. So he went around, uh, he went around to everybody in town uh, trying to see who the shoe fit because he knew everybody in town was gonna be trying to get with him. So what he found out was that everybody in town shopped at Nine West and they didn't have that shoe at Nine West. And so Cinderella was the only person in town that wore a size six. Everybody else wore a seven, eight, and nine. And so when he put the shoe on Cinderella, it fit her and it says, and they got married and they live. Snow White was another fairy tale that I saw. Snow White was a, was a fairy tale that I saw. Uh, Snow White was about a girl uh, who just happened to move into a house with seven dudes. Uh, now that, I could go a lot of places with that, uh, but, but, but don't hate, watch this, don't hate on Cinderella because all of them had a job. Somebody shout, whistle while you work, whistle while you work. Cinderella had it. Living in house seven dudes who all whistled while they worked, uh, and, and, and so uh, the wicked witch asked the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And she said, "I hate to tell you this, but it ain't you. <laughs> but it, it's it's Snow White." And so she she went and had Snow White bite the apples. Snow White goes into a trance, and all of a sudden the prince comes and rescues her, and they get married and they live <laughs> sleeping beauty. Sleeping Beauty was another fairy tale that I, I read. Uh, Sleeping Beauty was about uh, this, this, this young girl who from a child, uh, she was blessed as a child and everybody knew she was gonna be somebody, but a witch came and hated on her at her birth and said, when you become 16, uh, you are gonna die. As soon as you touch the wheel, you are gonna die. And so they made sure that the fairies said, well, she's not gonna die, she's just gonna go to sleep. And so they said, whoever loves her will wake her up. So Cinderella turned 16, and all of a sudden, she goes into this deep trance. Now, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you can love somebody that's been asleep all the time. How, how can you love somebody that's always asleep? I'm just asking the question about the fairy tale now. Uh, but but he's, he loves her, and, and when he kisses her, then she wakes up, and they get married, and they live. But you know, when it comes to whether or not that kind of thing can happen in real life. Do you think that that's real or is it just a fairy tale? Is it possible that people can really live happily ever after? Some of y'all asking that question right now. Some of y'all been asking that question for quite a while. Some of you some of you have been asking your friends, is it possible that you can live happily ever after? And I've come to tell you some good news, is that it is possible, but there's a format that you've got to follow. Well, first of all, what you've got to see uh, is you've got to have a father, it's good to have a father that's concerned and cautious. You've got a father that's concerned and cautious uh, because as our story begins in, in chapter 24, uh, Abraham is getting up there in years, and uh, in those days it was okay to arrange a marriage. And, and so Abraham calls uh, his, his oldest servant, the one that's been with him for the most amount of time, and says, uh, it's time now for, for my son to have a wife. He said, but promise me whatever you do, hear this, don't get her a can don't get him a Canaanite woman. All right? He, he, he says, whatever you do, I don't care where you get her from, just don't get a Canaanite woman. Why, why uh, is Abraham so against?